uh, for the Working Saints Fellowship with Brother Monaro. And maybe just to keep it simple, we'll pass it to you, Brother Monaro, if that's okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, good to see you all. It's just a bit of a bad habit, if I may say so, of uh, people not turning on their camera. I had a meeting with a group of um, FTTA graduates yesterday, and the 24 people there and only six people would turn on. So I have a little kind of a fight with them. So I said, I won't speak until you turn the camera on. They refused to turn the camera on. In the end, I have to give up. Uh, I lost the battle. And um, there were a couple of people, they were at work, so that's understandable. Um, but the rest, I simply do not know why they would not turn the camera on. And uh, after all, we are Zooming uh, by video, and that's the whole purpose of, of this thing, is that we can see and connect and in interact with one another. Um, so, um, uh, so I said, next time, uh, please, if you need to clean up your room or make your bed, whatever, please do that. But please, please turn your camera on. So I'll say the same thing tonight. I think it's almost the same, even worse, with uh, three cameras on and the rest are just black and white. And I don't know who you are and why you reveal, refuse to reveal yourself. Uh, I don't know, uh, unless you have something to hide. Um, Okay, that's good. A few more here. Thank you. Thank you. The more, the better. But I will not fight with you because of time. Um, as I said, uh, these are more um, having a chat. I'm sitting in my um, good old lounger, uh, being comfortable. I think you are uh, comfortable as well. Um, so let, let's uh, be relaxed and let's be uh, um, 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 you know not so uptight like listening to a message but that doesn't mean uh, there's no burden or uh, my burden is gonna you know uh, I'm just gonna uh, shoot the breeze or something like that uh, I do have a very strong burden and I have not forgotten my initial burden for this series of talks, and that is this whole matter of caring for people uh, by shepherding them and um, visiting them and contacting them and uh, bringing them under your wings and, and just cherishing them and fostering them uh, in the church life. Um, and I, there's still the that's still the driving burden, and um, in the coming days, weeks, whatever, I still would get there. And this is a heavy burden um, because I know that uh, if the church or a good percentage of the church would do that, i.e., you all would do that, uh, would acquire a habit. Uh, to do this, um, the church will change, and you will change. Uh, I have no doubt there will be a a revival of sorts uh, when that day comes. And caring for people, on the one hand, sounds uh, very demanding and kind of uh, challenging and um, uh, um, taking you out of the comfort, comfort zone. That's true. I, I would say that is true. Uh, but on the other hand, I like to say caring for people uh, is something that God has uh, put within us, that God 
actually made man in that kind of way. Uh, so when he said, love your neighbor as yourself, um, and, and so on, uh, he is not telling us to do something that we are uh, totally incapable of doing that we don't have it. an iota of feeling. No, a proper human being, including the unsaved, uh, has a kind of a, a built-in um, uh, uh, care for their uh, uh, neighbors, for their um, loved ones, for their friends, for their for humanity, for humanity, um, just for human beings. Uh, why so many don't? Well, that's another story for another time. Uh, that certainly is partly due to the fall. But um, a normal person would have a heart for his fellow men and uh, or fellow women, whatever. Um, there's just something there. And when God comes into us, um, pouring actually uh, his love, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit uh, that has been given to us, uh, there is that added portion or element of the divine love that uh, would come into our human love that has been uh, compromised or damaged or reduced uh, to strengthen it, to uplift it, to enrich it, to use it to love others so that God in the end can love others, love men through us. We say God so loved the world. Yes, God does love the world, but somewhat indirectly, God loves the world through his people. God loves the world through his believers. God loves the world through us. And that is a love demonstrated. That is a love expressed. That is a love that is uh, touchable, feelable, sensible, uh, experienceable. And so, um, and so when we talk about caring for others, shepherding others, taking care of uh, other people's well-being, uh, we have something innate in us. And now further, we have really what it takes to do that, and that is the Lord himself. The love of God is simply the Lord. God has love in us. But we will get there. Um, um, but I am still burdened since we uh, have our last talk before the uh, Taiwan, recent Taiwan conference, and I spoke to you about calling on the name of the Lord, I think. I, I did. And I thought about it. And uh, I'd like to tell you that this matter of calling on the name of the Lord is a huge, huge matter. Um, you know, it's it kind of worked both ways. You know, in the Lord's recovery, we... We are so blessed with this, to know this practice, right? We uh, encourage to practice this. We are taught uh, in the Lord's word uh, on this, uh, concerning this practice. And to some degree, we practice it. So that is good. Uh, today, uh, you meet the believers. They may call the Lord when they pray, right? Oh, God, oh, Lord, especially when they have a need, they're in distress, uh, that's the 911 that we all know, right? But uh, as it were, they don't know how to call any time and at every time and in every place, uh, like turning on a switch, uh, like instantaneously, like uh, um, uh, on demand. Uh, one can actually substantiate the Lord. One can actually enjoy 
uh, God, one can actually uh, be saved from so many things. One can actually, uh, at that very moment, enjoy all the, the untold riches of Christ, uh, of glory. Uh, at that moment when you make that call, most believers don't know that. So accidentally they bump on the switch and they got, got the blessing. Um, but we know where that switch is in our spirit. And we know the way to flip that switch is simply by calling. But because we know it, we do it kind of, this is part of our um, uh, culture or something. We don't treasure it as much as we should. We deem it common, you know, uh, like, you know, so what? You know, um, uh, this is elementary. This is basic. This is uh, too easy. Or maybe it is, this is uh, too simple. And so that's a bad side. And that is in the church life, this matter of calling becomes after a while just routine and, and really uh, even done uh, without the heart. Um, um, uh, and so, and so we miss, we miss the joy and the blessing of this great, great matter. And why am I, am I talking about this? not just to isolate this matter of calling on the name of the Lord as some kind of subject here, but brothers and sisters, I tell you, without this experience of the Lord, of contacting the Lord anytime, any place you want, and experiencing A, his present, practical, and salvation in life at that moment, from every negative thing ranging from your problems, from your uh, 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 condition, you know, uh, from grief, from sadness, uh, from um, um, or uh, when you are um, uh, overwhelmed, when, when you are overcome uh, by certain problems or by sin or by sins, or when you are tempted by the world. Um, you are you are under Satan's attack. You are um, uh, you are under an environmental uh, oppression or suppression. Um, we can call and be saved. We we can call, oh God, oh Lord, Lord Jesus, and we will be saved. But we don't. Oh, we murmur it or maybe we mumble it, but we don't call out. You know the word. Call is epikaleo. That means to call out, to call audibly, to call loudly, you know? Otherwise, Paul wouldn't know who's who. He, he heard them calling, so get them, you know? Arrest them. These are the callers of the, of, of the Lord. And, um, and so... Our calling on the law and brothers have been very reduced, mine included, very reduced. We maybe let's say it's from zero to ten. I think I'll call it less than five, typically. You know, around two or three. And we call it a day. We said I call on the Lord. But but it's it's zero to ten. And you can get ten if you want. Um First, in terms of salvation, you know, Romans 10, it says, call on the Lord, number one, and we will be saved. And number two, um, he is rich to all who call upon him. So there are two things going on here. Number one, salvation. And number two, the enjoyment of his riches. And these two things is everything. That's it. That is what God has um, uh, uh, is blessing us with, number one, to be saved, right? And we know that verse does not apply just to our one-time salvation. It, 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 it refers to our daily salvation until the Lord comes. I'll tell you, even the kingdom in the next age will still be calling. 
and the Jews will be joining us to call at that time. Uh, because today they refuse to acknowledge this Christ as Lord, as the Messiah. So they will join us. And I believe in the eternity, we will still be drawing from the wells uh, of water. Am I right? Calling on the name of the Lord. And so um, we need a recovery. Uh, in, in the early 90s, when Bradley talked about the Philo group, and he um, uh, and uh, he talked start talking about the high peak, and he said this. He said, "I'm so concerned. Now we're at the high peak. We actually know the best and the most profound of all the Christian truths and doctrines. There is way beyond the Plymouth Brethren, way before all the top teaching of the uh, of." Uh, of the Christians, we have it, we have it, and we know, and those of you who have been to the training, you get a full dose of it in two years, all right? But, brothers and sisters, uh, that's one thing, you know, we should all know the truth, we, and all of that, but at that time, brother really say, I'm so concerned that you have that, and you know that, and you, uh, uh, but, but you're not living, you you you're dead. Um, so he he did a flip. He said, "I wish I can come to some local churches, and I will find groups of saints over here doing nothing but calling on the Lord." He said that, and, and uh, calling on the Lord, and another group over there just praying, reading the Word, um, and something like that. Um, and he stresses the need for us to be in the spirit in this way. In other words, having a daily life, that is according to 1 Thessalonians 5, right? Pray without ceasing. That's calling on the name of the Lord, right? Rejoice always. That comes from calling on the name of the Lord because when we call on the name of the Lord, we delight in Jehovah, don't we? We, we become joyous, um, uh, uh, that's why we 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 draw water out the well, this well of salvation, calling on the name of Jehovah. So calling is breathing, calling is drinking, calling is even eating all the riches of Jehovah. And but but we 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 know so much in the Lord's recovery. We know so much. We we. We know the best. But I'll tell you, in this matter, we're weak. So our daily life, our Christian life, is not robust. It is not uh, powerful. It is not vital. Uh, it is not strong. Rather, it is what I call this kind of constant low-grade depression, kind of, kind of in twilight zone. And, and we find ourselves without strength. To serve, we don't have that kind of energy or or, or excitement uh, or enthusiasm uh, for the Lord and 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 to um, in in so many things in the gospel in the church life in so many things um, and doing many things rather uh, but in the way of duty or even in a good sense being responsible. But that is not the joy. The joy of Jehovah is our strength. Isn't this in Nehemiah chapter 8? The joy of Jehovah is our strength. You know, there, uh, Nehemiah had just gotten Ezra to read the law again to the people and even to interpret that law to give them insight and understanding. Uh, isn't that what we're getting in the recovery, like, like the best intrinsic significance knowledge, right, of the Bible, bar none, bar none. But it says those people, after they read, they were grieved. <laughs> they were grieved because it's so, it's uh, they, they face the law, they, they, they don't know what to do with it. In other words, you may say they couldn't, they couldn't do it. So they were depressed. They were they couldn't live up to that. And then Nehemiah said, no. He said, 
uh, the joy of Jehovah is your strength. You know, everyone go home and rejoice, eat and drink, and then uh, uh, and delight yourself and so on. And eventually they even through that start to recover the feasts, you know, the various feasts that was lost, that they were lost. And in the end, brothers and sisters, there's no way we can keep the law. There's no way even we can do the thing, words of the ministry. There's no, I, I tell you, okay, go shepherd. I tell you, that's another law, right? That's another burden. That's another demand. And you may do it, you know, grit your teeth and go do it because it's a good thing and you're supposed to do it. But there's no, no, no fire. There's no energy. There's no happiness. There's no joy. And so there's no strength. I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about that. So, run, sisters, you cannot get away. If we want to be a, um, a normal uh, serving saint, if we want to be a shepherd of Christ, to shepherd his goats, his sheep, his lambs, uh, if we want to be really those who are living an overcoming life in, in, in the highest way, according to God's standard, you need strength. You need power. You need extra energy. You need some special virtues. How do you get that? It's only from the Lord, only from Christ, only from God himself. And here is a way for us to do that, to access that, to on demand, enjoy all of this negatively to be safe from ourselves, from the world, from sin, from so many things, positively to experience, you know, the all-inclusive Christ, the good land, the riches, and all of this. And these two things combined will be ready to serve him, to serve him with joy. I mean, if we have in Irvine a joyous army of working saints, I mean, and I tell you, service is no problem. Shepherding is no problem. Meetings is no problem. Because everyone is filled with the Spirit. In Acts, very, very clearly, you see that the Holy Spirit and joy are synonymous. In one verse, it says, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit, as if these two things are conjoined. Whenever you're filled with the Spirit, you're filled with joy. And so to, to, to lack the calling on the Lord is to lack the Spirit. You haven't been breathing. You haven't been drinking. And so I, I tell you, those are the two things that will keep you alive. You can not eat, you know, for two weeks or longer. But goodness, how long can you not breathe and how long can you not drink? Very short period of time. So... Saints, we need a revival. Irvine needs a revival. Um, uh, you and I need a revival. But there is a way. There is a way. So please do not think, saints, this is easy. This is basic. This is for the new believers. No, not at all. So last time we um, um, we talked about, uh, I didn't even, I didn't study this thing. I'm just recalling the history of the calling on the name of the Lord. Now I, I have something put down together here. I, I'll be very quick. Of course, that, this, that super wonderful uh, um, um, uh, footnote there in Acts, right? Chapter 2 on this whole history of uh, the uh, man's calling on God. Uh, you, you can go read it there. Um, so... I, I just say a few things here again. You know, calling on the name of the Lord is not a new practice. Don't don't think it's this witness Lee invented this or no, no. This began, it didn't even begin with the New Testament believers. It began with Enosh, right? Enosh Cohen, it be not, belongs, began with him, the third generation of mankind, third generation, you know. We all know that, you know, Enosh means uh, frail, mortal, right? Enosh, that's your meaning. You, you, you're called frail. You're called mortal. You know, I, I'm just thinking, 
human race today, you know, it just uh, 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 three words, four words, uh, 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 vanity, frailty, uh, mortality. Am I right? That that that's that's the description of the fallen mankind today. And what do they need? They all just need to call on the Lord Jesus, and they will be saved from that. And they can be uh, living in reality. They can be strong, and they will have eternity instead of mortality in them. When they when they start to call on the name of Jehovah, you know the word Jehovah means uh, uh, Yah. Jehovah, Je Yah, which is a short name for Jehovah, the Eternal One means the Eternal One, um, and and um, and the Eternal One as our salvation, right? Or the Eternal One, our salvation. The men. The soon as they discover they, they 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 are just temporal, they are just vain. They are, they start to call on the real thing. They start to call on the eternal one, the saving one. By they they may be vain and weak, but by calling on the Lord, they become rich and strong. Since this should be us every day. You feel vain. I do sometimes. You just call. You feel weak. Call. You'll be enriched. You'll be strengthened. You you will you will enter into these riches and this 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 strength of this eternal one that you're calling on. It works. It works, brothers and sisters. But we, we have all the knowledge. We have all the knowledge. God become man, man become God. We, but meanwhile, we're living in vanity and frailty and mortality and whatever else. Something is not right. That practice is continued by Job. Job preceded Abraham. In that early, early times, men call on the, the Lord. Uh, Job has a verse here I like. I just found it in the... Uh, Job 27, he says, does he, you know, man, take delight in the Almighty? Will he call upon God at all times? They put these two, two, two uh, uh, this verse, these two phrases together. You can see that to take delight in the, uh, in the Almighty, that really means in our verbiage, to enjoy the Almighty God to enjoy our, the, our God today. And the way is what? Is to call upon God at all times, at, all, at every moment, every day. So they didn't have the Bible. They didn't have anything. But they have the name of God. They have Jehovah. And they call. They call. And they call every day. And they call all the time. And by that, they take delight in the Almighty. Tell you, in this whole universe, there's no delight. There's no gladness. There's no uh, felicity. There is no joy. All right? There's no satisfaction. The only thing is God, is God himself, is Christ himself. Why won't we call upon him? Abraham called upon him. You, you go and read Genesis, uh, chapter after chapter, chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 21. He, he built the altar and, you know, he, uh, erected a tent, and he called. And he just called on the name of Jehovah. That's his sustenance. That he, Abraham, by doing that, contacted and experienced the ever-living God, this this secret, this mysterious God, who is life, who is eternal life, who is eternity itself, he called, he called on him. That that's how he was sustained. That's how eventually he became a friend of God. 
is practiced by Moses. Moses and the children of Israel go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Samson, not so good illustration, but nevertheless, call on the name of Jehovah. Samuel, call on the name of Jehovah. David, oh my, David, call on the name of Jehovah over and over and over again. He called on the Lord the most if you turn to Psalms. Turn to Psalms. He, 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 he. He, he, he has enemies after him. He he need to be saved from the, those enemies. Um, he drank from the cup of salvation, kind of like Isaiah. He called out on Jehovah out of distress. You know, yeah, King David was distressed. And it says when he called, Jehovah answered his call. There's a number of places in the Old Testament that says, when you call upon me, I will answer you. What a promise, what a covenant that is. And so Jehovah answered his prayer and bring him, deliver him into a broad and free place. So, so, so David is the one who said, call on him while he is near. While he is near. And today that, that is absolutely in Romans 10, that, that chapter on calling, those verses. The word is near you, right? Even in your mouth and in your heart. You just call on the name. If you believe in your heart, you call on the name of the Lord. You will be saved and you enjoy his riches. The psalmist Asaph called on the Lord, the name of the Lord. He said, revive us and we will call on your name. He said this. My goodness, uh, Psalmist Heman, Heman, in in, uh, in in the book of Psalms, called out unto Jehovah in his affliction. Uh, we all have affliction. We all have problems. We all have troubles all the time. When one comes, one leaves, the other comes right along, nonstop. What are you going to do? Just give up or just complain or or just get so depressed, we can call, brothers and sisters, we can call. Elijah called. So God answered with fire from heaven. Isaiah called, of course, in the wonderful in chapter 12, you know, therefore with joy shall we draw water. Those, those verses with rejoicing and praising, drawing water out of springs of salvation. <clears throat> call on the Lord the way that's the way to drink just oh Lord let us fill Irvine with the name of Jesus shall we let us fill our homes with the name of Lord Jesus let us fill our meetings let us come together to do nothing but just call on his name you know, there are at least 16 hymns in our hymnal there, you know, on the section on praise of the Lord, just on his name. A number of them are by Sister Margaret Barber, as you know, uh, uh, on the highest name, on the glory, mighty name of Jesus, and so on. And and I think we all agree when in the uh, meetings of the church we 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 sing those hymns and suddenly oh the Lord is just there, right? The Lord is just there. To call on the Lord, brothers and sisters, is not. Please don't don't mumble that name. Don't. Yeah, if you're in the library, you have to whisper. But to call on the Lord really means to cry out, cry out. Maybe you cannot cry out outwardly, but inwardly, I think you can. To, to do this deep spiritual breathing, just breathing. Oh, just, right? A.B. Simpson, we are breathing, breathing out our sorrows, breathing in his healing, breathing breathing in his riches, breathing out all these sinful, unclean, and dirty things, breathing in the clean and positive things, breathing in the Lord himself. 
Jeremiah blew from the lowest pit. He was in a dungeon. He was fully suppressed. He breathed. It's nothing but heaviness all around him. He breathed out. He just, he had no way out. He just, the only thing he could do in that dungeon is to breathe out that heaviness and, and be delivered from that low pit that he is in. He couldn't get out physically. That's all he could do. But that call transports one from the lowest place to uh, the third heavens, doesn't it? Doesn't it, brothers and sisters? Instantly. Why would not we not be there? Even the Gentiles know that the prophets of Israel have the habit of calling on the Lord. And needless to say, in the New Testament, all the early believers practiced calling on the name of the Lord everywhere. Paul was a practitioner. He started when he was baptized. And Ananias, I think, make sure that he call on the Lord because he was going around uh, persecuting the callers. And now as a sign, as a real sign of your uh, uh, conversion, not just baptized, but you start to call and people will really know you've turned. You're a changed man. And so he called Stephen when he was dying, the last breath. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Paul's word to Timothy, right? Pursue, flee your full lust, pursue all these virtues, that is Christ, um, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So in, those, in the early church, they were actually, they practiced calling on the Lord. That's what they did. And even Paul told Timothy to, to do that. Now I have here a wonderful short sentence from somewhere in the ministry uh, on this matter. I think you can find it quite easily. It's wonderful. And, and it's laced with verses. It's based on verses. It is God's commandment and desire that his people call on him. Calling is the joyful way to drink from the fountain of God's salvation and the enjoyable way to delight oneself in God. That is to enjoy him. Hence, God's people must call upon him daily. Don't, don't you like that, brothers and sisters? Don't you like that? Don't you like that to be a description of your life every day. So uh, I don't know what else to say. I think my 30 minutes is over, right? You know, is that right? Uh, you're muted. So how much time do I have? You, oops, sorry, I couldn't unmute. Um, I believe the 30 minutes is up, but we're all oh. we're all ears, brother. Very um, encouraging fellowship. Well, well, um, yeah. I mean, I've been thinking maybe we should have a little conference on calling on the name of the Lord where I don't share, you share. Everybody share. And we encourage one another to call on the Lord. And we'll bring the church in Irvine into a fresh new practice of calling on the name of the Lord. Like we just got here. How about that? Uh, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I have here, and I don't have the time now, but I have here uh, the other uh, little outline uh, on the glorious name of the Lord Jesus. So, that, I just covered the history part, right? Uh, but this is on the glorious name of the Lord Jesus. I'll give you the main point, just the main point. That number one, God, this, just, this is just talking about this name, okay? Just this name. Think about this name. God bestowed on Jesus 
the name which is above every name. Now that's Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Th this will be the theme verse, if you will, uh, in this outline. I mean, brothers and sisters, we are talking not about your name or my name. We're talking about the highest name in this universe. We're, we're talking about the greatest, mightiest name there is. We're talking about the name of Jesus, no less. That's the name. Okay, you you call me, sorry, I couldn't help, okay. You call this name, this highest name. You just think what will happen. And unlike the president, he won't probably, you write him, he probably have no one to answer you. This one, whenever you call, he's there. He will answer, he said so. He will respond. You call the name, you get the spirit. And why would we not call? You know, a name is the sum total. And this is the ministry's definition. The sum total, uh, the expression of the sum total of what, of what the Lord Jesus is in his person and his work. Now, just think about that for a minute. Let me break this down. The name. Lord Jesus, huh, is the expression of the sum total of what the Lord Jesus is in his person and in his work. Now, what can be greater than that? All that the Lord is in his person, all his processes, all that he went through, everything that is today in the compound and life-giving, all-inclusive spirit is in this name. Is in this name. I don't care what you want. I don't care what you need. This name has so much that will exceed your need. But we live like paupers. We, we live like beggars. We, we live like uh, poor people. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. That's a shame. One name covers it all. One name has it all. Really, really. And this outline continues. To, I don't have the time to cover. Just Jesus, okay? Just Jesus. What, what, <laughs> what a name. What a name given by God to this Virgin Mary, right? that this child that is to be conceived in her womb was to be called this name. So God didn't give me my name. You know, my grandfather gave me my name. There's one, there's a man whose name was given by God. And this is a God, the God man. So there's a lot to this. Jesus, the Greek equivalent, you know, in the Old Testament is, is the same word as Joshua. Joshua, which means Jehovah, the Savior, and the salvation of Jehovah. Now, let me just jump. I mean, this is too good to jump over. And there's another uh, section just on the word Lord, you know? No man can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. So today, his name is not Jesus, the man. Today, he is the ascended Lord. He is the Lord in exaltation. Today, he's not just the Savior who came to save us. Today, this is a man who has gone above, enthroned, by God in his ascension to be the Lord of all, of the whole universe, of heaven and earth. That lordship, there's a lordship element in that name. When you touch that name, 
you touch the authority of that name. You, you touch something that is above everything. You, you touch something that is ready to overcome, to rule at all things. The Lord of all. I mean, I mean, we, we need to take time. I, I think that's why I think we need a conference to explain what is the Lord means. What does Jesus mean? You, you know, we take it for granted. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. No, no, no. We, we need to study that name. We need to study what is the Lord. And then when you call, you, 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 you would have a super appreciation of just what that name entails, what that Lord really means. And that will change, change your whole way of this practice. And then it says the Lord's name, this wonderful name, Lord Jesus, just denotes, as I mentioned earlier, his person. And this whole point is when we call Lord Jesus, the Lord's person is the spirit today. All right. And the name is his identity. The name is his expression. So when we call Lord Jesus, what do we receive? What do we get? The spirit. My, I tell you, this is, I mean, miracle of miracles. We, there, there, there's no reason why we should be so, you know, moping around and, and defeated and, and depressed and, and unable. That it, it, we should not be like that. Because of this name. And when we call this name instantly, if we're in the right condition, we get the spirit. We receive the spirit. That's why in Corinthians it says, chapter 12, verse 3, no man can say Lord Jesus except in the Holy Spirit. That is a reverse way of saying this, that whenever we call Lord Jesus in a proper way, we're in the Holy Spirit. We're in, that means we're one with the Spirit. We're enjoying that Spirit at that time. That's why we say calling on the Lord is breathing, like air. That's the Spirit. It's like drinking, right? It's like drinking. We're drinking the Spirit, the water. We, we drink, we breathe, and we do all this. Dear brothers and sisters, we enjoy the riches, we get saved. And do you know what this really is? This is real worship to God. This is real worship to God. When you call Lord Jesus, you're worshiping God. Not only we get the benefit, God gets the worship. So today, brothers and sisters, I didn't get into Jesus and Lord. I'm just saying, dear saints, I think these days we need to be reduced from our complication, even from a lot of our head knowledge. We need some unloading. I don't mean the truth we have is bad. And we don't need it. You, you know what I mean. But we have a lot of this, but not a lot of this. Uh, you know, the, the, the spirit. We, 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 uh, we have become a, a, a complicated believers. Um, when we contact the Lord, I don't care you are Brother Lee, I don't care you are the Apostle Paul. When you contact the Lord, we just need to be simple. Just simple. Too many of us are complicated, so complicated. And of course, when we're in our mind, it doesn't help. We need to be simplified. I feel these days we need to be simplified. All these knowledge, good knowledge, recovery of knowledge, in another way, can become, can frustrate us from the simplicity that is in Christ, from our enjoyment of Christ. So 
we know all this, you know, when a brother stand to speak, we can finish his sentence. You know what I mean? Uh, when a brother start to speak on some subject, you just know it already. Um, uh, when a hymn is called, you already know where it is. Well, well that's wonderful. But, but saints, then you look at yourself, you, you, have, you don't have joy. You're not in the heavens. You're defeated or half defeated. You don't have that kind of, you know, uh, vibrancy. You, you don't have that kind of vitality. Uh, you, have, you have no impact. You have no impact. What, what's wrong? Because we may have this, but we what? We lost the enjoyment of the Lord as our air, as our drink, as our food, which is what we need, which is what will save us at the end of the day. These saints, I, 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 I hope my speaking here is not just inspiring you or, or kind of you know uh, exciting you a little bit. There, there's a there's something we need to come back to, and this is a great one. This is a great thing. You know, there was a time I'll end here when we were attacked by Christianity for our calling. And they say this is something from the East. This is uh, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, prayer with repetition. Uh, this is chanting like Hare Krishna, you know, in my days, you know, Hare Krishna. This is an oriental chanting. We were attacked soundly along with prayer reading. And, and little did they know that this changed our whole Christian life. They, they, so many miracles are happening. I mean, true miracles in our lives. Um, we, we see things, there's light and there's joy and there's strength, there's um, uh, grace. And, and I, I tell you, that's what's the church life. But those in religion, they, they don't practice this. They just know, you know, the knowledge, the law, uh, the forms, the religion. But I'm afraid we have become like that, or at least we can become like that in the church life. I hope there would be a change. Maybe we should consider and pray to the Lord. Maybe we need a little conference. I don't care to speak. You speak about all these wonderful aspects of the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's what we need today. I stop here. Amen. Well, thank you, Brother Monero. Very wonderful fellowship. Amen. And thanks. Maybe uh, before we conclude with a few announcements, how about just wherever we are and however we can, we can just together, muted or unmuted, call on the name of the Lord. How about that? Amen. 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 Oh, Lord. Oh, Amen. Jesus. Lord 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 Jesus. Amen. Again, very, Lord very Jesus. wonderful saints. Uh, oh, thank you again, Brother Monoro. Oh, Lord. Um, how precious is this fellowship? Uh, may we not just be inspired uh, temporarily and just some momentary encouragement, but really take our brother's fellowship to heart and, and practice. There's Amen. no reason Amen. after hearing our brother say it again and again to live in a state of low grade depression, you know, half defeated when the Lord's name is so rich and, and able to save whenever we call on his wonderful name. Oh, no. so just a few so just a few announcements before we go here. March seventh, just mark it on the calendar. 
uh, is the next time we'll have with Brother Monaro. And then after that will be March uh, 21st. And then just another reminder that the Church in Irvine does have a YouTube channel and these fellowships are uploaded to that channel. And if you subscribe, you get a notification in your inbox uh, when it's available. So uh, how about with that, we can just stop here and dear saints, pray, let us keep calling on the Lord. Amen. 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 Good night, Amen. everyone. Good night.